Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for our time of spiritual transformation. Today is Thursday, January 14th, halfway through the month of January. You're making it through. Thank you so much for joining us for our time of spiritual transformation. Today is such a special, special treat. I have Dania Jordan, who is the founder and CEO of Blessing Brokers, who's joining us to just share a word. Today's message is unshakable faith. Boy, do we need unshakable faith in this time. So let me tell you a little bit about Danya. She is the founder and president of Blessing Brokers, loves serving as a donor development consultant, and formerly as Proverbs 31 Ministries Executive Director of Donor Development. 26 years of nonprofit leadership, passionate about working together to prayerfully equip and empower and encourage God-sized visions to become a reality. And I think you're going to get a God-sized message today. And I couldn't, as I said, couldn't be more excited. One of the things I'm going to just tell everyone who listens in, I love when God brings powerful women in to share a message um, and just, yeah, it's all been so good. And so, Dania, what is God putting on your heart today? Mm, Eric, well, thank you. Good, good morning. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you. I feel like our spirits, uh, the Holy Spirit in us just is all stirred up. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Uh, what has the Holy Spirit been telling me to stand strong and unshakable, have unshakable faith in these shaking times? Goodness, we, we were excited to get into 2021 and look look back at 2020, um, say we are finished, thinking the shaking was finished mm -hmm. and the shaking continues into mm -hmm. 2021. And looking at biblical scripture throughout the Old Testament and in the New Testament, all throughout the New Testament, there is shaking. Mm -hmm. There is shaking. And so um, when I look at us going into 2021, I think about a car, the windshield is much bigger than the rear view mirror yes. for a reason. So I really want us to think about how we can, what we can learn, but also moving forward and how we can move forward in faith together. Even from the Garden of Eden, the first words of Adam from Adam to the Lord, when the Lord asked him that question, where are you? And he gave an answer and said, because I was afraid and there is fear even in the garden of Eden we're wired to have fear in us and fear moving forward in these unshakable uncertain unprecedented times those are those adjectives we continue to hear throughout um, 2021 and in, in 2020 starting from March with the pandemic and so I think about how we as Christian leaders are called to move forward. And the big question that I'll ask in the beginning and as we finish our time together is where is God calling us to rise up in these unshakable times mm. as we experience unshakable faith? So I think about in on Good Friday, the most somber day of our Christianity, Matthew 27, 51 through 54 describes an earthquake an earthquake on Good Friday. So there was shaking in the worst of times. And then one chapter later in Matthew 28, Matthew 28, verse two, there was an earthquake on Resurrection Sunday, the best day. Yeah. So there's going to continue to be shaking, not just in the hard times or the pandemic or the with the economic um, climate or the cha changing of the administration. They're shaking in great times, the best of times also. I think about the first line in the ta Charles Dickens' Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And we as leaders have the ability to have that perspective. Is it the best of times or is it the worst of times? Because the shaking continues. I love the minor prophets in the Old Testament. So in uh, in those little books of the Bible that are just a couple of chapters, um, usually just a couple of chapters, I look at Amos, Amos, um, Amos 9, um, Amos 9, 9. This is exciting. It says, for behold, I will command and shake the house of Israel among all the nations as one shakes with a sieve, but no pebble shall fall to the earth. Mm. And by the way, anytime I see the word all in my Bible, I circle it because in Every translation, all means what? All. all. <laughs> I 
That's right. That's right. Well, a couple of verses later, the title, the subtitle says the restoration of Israel. And you, when I read um, verse 11, it says, in that day, I will raise up the booth of David that has fallen and repair, repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. And then verse 13, this is Amos 9, verse 13, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him who sows the seed, the mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. So I will restore, verse 14, I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel and they shall build the ruined cities and inhabit them. So what does that mean? I had a, a friend who is also a donor of a ministry, um, who's a client, who said, as we get closer to Jesus's return, that we won't be able to plant seeds fast enough, plant seeds of faith fast, seeds of faith fast enough because the they will be the reaping will happen fast, the harvest will happen faster. And I said, show me that scripture. This is that scripture. Mm. It's happening so fast. Let me read that verse again. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. He's plowing faster. He's plowing faster. And the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. So keep, let's keep planting, keep sowing. And then I read I, uh, verse 14, I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities. I, you and I were talking a little earlier. So I'm in, uh, I'm a minister of stewardship. I'm a blessings broker. And so I work with ministries to help fuel their God-sized vision and have them come to fruition. Well, when we look at the United States versus all the other countries in the world, the United States is by far the most generous. Mm. There's a reason for that. Psalm 33 um, says that a nation who basically blesses the Lord, he will bless. And so may we continue to have our eyes on Jesus as we move forward and he will restore our fortunes. He will add, so whatever the NASDAQ is doing, don't panic, don't panic. What goes down will come back up and keep giving, keep serving, keep sowing those yeah. seeds of faith. Um, and then in Haggai, oh my goodness, this is another one. So just a couple pages over, you know, there's Obadiah, there's Micah, you know, got a couple more. Here's Haggai, only two chapters. There's so much packed, I encourage you to read that today, mm. two little chapters in Haggai. So here's Haggai 2, um, verse 5. It says, according to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Mm. That spirit, mm. capital S, spirit, Holy Spirit. Fear not. Mm. Fear not. This is the ESV version. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. <clears throat> and I will shake all nations. I circled that all nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. In verse nine, Haggai two, the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I love this, in this place, I will give peace, mm. declares the Lord of hosts. Oh, goodness, that gives me chills just saying that. I will give peace because do we see much peace right now in the United States that so we are so divided, divided even among Christians? Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Prince of Peace and he is shaking. It says here, I, it says here for um, in a little while, yet once more in a little while, <laughs> I will shake the heavens of the earth and the sea and the dry land. So the shaking continues. And then we look in the, the New Testament. Oh, my word. Um, I think about Pentecost, Acts 2. How awesome. And then the same Holy Spirit, Eric, on Pentecost is the same Holy Spirit in you, is the same Holy Spirit in me, is the yeah. same Holy Spirit in anyone watching or listening the same Holy Spirit. But I looked and they were, I mean, you think about, they were freaked out <laughs> when Jesus had, had come back and then he had ascended and they had, when had the doors locked because they were, they were fearful. So what happened? Um, 
Acts 2, 1, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, scared to death. I can see them probably trembling. And suddenly, suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then we keep, we keep going and they were, they were filled with new wine. Verse 12, it says, but others mocking them said, they are filled with new wine. They were amazed and perplexed. It happened suddenly. So we, this shaking that continues, the Holy Spirit, I believe the Lord is ushering, or, uh, ushering us into the third great awakening. Mm. It is time. This is revival that is coming. It, it doesn't seem like it in the shaking, but this is when we are as salt and light, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. My life verse is, let your, is shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and praise your father, glorify your father in heaven, some translations say. But I think of that adverb suddenly. With us as Christians, we, we make our plans. God determines our steps. And suddenly there will be change, mm. not necessarily incrementally on a spreadsheet by percentage. It's going to be suddenly the signs, miracles, and wonders happen. Suddenly mm. people can see our unshakable faith. Suddenly people are going to be drawn closer to him. And <clears throat> so from Acts 2, like I said, that same Holy Spirit in Billy Graham as the greatest evangelist to walk this earth in my in my humble opinion, I believe he, the Holy Spirit, is calling us to rise up to that level, that level, that intensity, that courageous faith, unshakable mm -hmm. faith. And as I, I'd like to turn to Luke 21, um, Luke 21. Well, actually, I'll go to Hebrews first. They're in Hebrews 12, 25 through 29, and then I'll go to Luke 21 and end us there. Hebrews 12, 25 through 29, it, the mention of shaking or shaken or shook is five times in this passage. So let's take a listen. This is Hebrews. So again, not just the Old Testament, but all throughout the New Testament. So almost toward the end of our Bible, we're reading this. Oh, this is so convicting to me. I need this message so much. Make sure that you do not reject the one who speaks. The one is capitalized. For if they did not escape when they rejected him who warned them on earth, even less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven. Verse 26, this is Hebrews 12. His voice shook the earth at that time, but now he has promised yet once more. We just read yet once more back in Amos. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Mm. The spiritual mm. realm is yeah. being shaken as the earthly realm is being shaken. Verse 27, this expression, yet once more, actually that was Haggai, I read that, indicates the removal of what can be shaken. That is created things so that what is not shaken might remain. Are we looking at created things or our creator mm. for our satisfaction, for our joy that comes from the Holy Spirit for our happiness? And then verse, verse 28 and 29, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, mm. let us hold on to grace. By it, we may serve God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and awe. Verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire. Mm. Mm. So the shaking continues. When I think about what is what God is saying um, through that passage, I, um, I did this, I was given this passage at a retreat and with blanks to say, where, what is God saying mm. to you? And I I mean, I ask the Lord for forgiveness for times I've rejected him um, over my own plans. Um, and then I know, I said, you are shaking the earth and heaven. Your voice shook. It will shake yet once more. I need you. Our country needs you. Our world needs you. And this was actually back in November. I wrote this. Wow. Keep me strong and unshakable in my faith. When I'm the weakest, you're the strongest. 
I said, bring our president, our country back to you. I deserve to serve you acceptably, wholeheartedly, reverently with all. Fan the flame, Lord, fan mm -hmm. the flame. Because God is our, uh, our consumable. He is our consuming fire, not consumable. He's our consuming fire. Yeah. So with that, let me go to Luke, Luke 21, um, verse 25 through 28. Here's one more passage, one more passage about um, shaking. This is also when we think about the um, how Jesus was um, prophesying to the to the disciples, and they weren't getting it. They weren't quite getting it. And look at us today; we're still not getting it, are we? Mm -hmm. Two thousand years old. We have it written down. We have it all written down. This is so. This is all in red. What I'm about to read. This is straight from Jesus. <laughs> so, and even my subtitle, Luke 21, 25 through twenty, yeah, twenty eight, said. It says the coming of the son of man and there will be signs in sun and moon and stars didn't we just see the christmas star december 21st and on the earth distress of nations mm -hmm. in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken and then, then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. <clears throat> now, when these things begin to take place, straighten up and mm. raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Mm. Mm. So good. And it, it, that is so, um, you see the reality, but then you, you're so hopeful um, well, I'm, I'm a Southern girl, I'm born in Charleston, South Carolina. I live here in the Charlotte area of North Carolina. Um, but we used to sing these old gospel hymns around the piano. And I don't know if you remember one, one is called Redemption Draweth Nigh. Mm. And it's from this passage. So when I was reading this passage, I was like, oh my goodness. And so those words came. So I, I, I'm going to try this chorus. <laughs> But I don't know. Oh, you might want to edit this part out. I know we're live, but look out because it's now becoming. I mean, I was sing, singing it in the shower because may this be a rally cry. May this be our mantra as we move forward. Mm. Um, so it, it says, Signs of the times are everywhere, and there's a brand new feeling in the air keep your eyes upon the eastern skies lift up your head redemption draw with night oh beautiful i'm glad you didn't invite me to sing along if everybody would come down <laughs> <laughs> so when we think about the shaking even though our country is shaking our country is divided we heard of unprecedented uncertain times the shaking is happening in the worst of times and in the best of times mm. and we as leaders are being called to ride up rise up god is sovereign god is sure god is steadfast and god is our savior jesus mm. christ is our savior and i think about that verse in first corinthians 15 58 therefore my beloved brothers be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the Lord, your, the Lord, knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Mm. Our labor is not in vain. God sees, God knows, and keep moving forward. Even when your knees are trembling, keep moving ahead. The armor of God all faces the front from Ephesians 6, that mm helmet of salvation, that breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, the sword of the, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit all face the front. So in our unshakable faith, be encouraged and, and let's consider where is God calling us to rise up in the shaking. I love that. I love that, Daniel. Thank you so much. I just, <laughs> so much rich stuff here. Like, we need to go back and continue to unpack all of this. You went through so much just really, really good scripture 
Uh, one of the things that just keeps coming to mind is a word that God gave to me towards the end of the year, which was this idea that 2020 was the setup. Mm -hmm. 2020 was the setup for what we're to be called to, to be doing in 2021. And the number one thing, especially that I pull out of this, is this idea of no fear, because our God is not a God of fear. If you are a believer, if you're someone who's sitting and you've got an ounce of fear, what I would encourage you to do is, A, you're probably getting it from the media, so turn your TV off and turn all the other and plug into the God of hope because the number one thing that I keep coming back to, especially when we look at this rising up and having unshakable faith is this idea that if 2020 was the setup and if there is fear in 2021, then someone has to be the antidote. You know, we're all talking about getting vaccinations and everything like that. Who can, how can we as believers be the vaccination for fear? Ooh, that's, good. that's going on in the world right now. And that's what the world needs. And only our faith in God and only our belief and our understanding of what is being shaken and what is not being shaken and how God will, you know, preserve us. One of the things that if you haven't had a chance, I'll tell everyone who's watching yesterday, I posted it on my Facebook page. It's on my YouTube page is a video I filmed about 20 minutes of my word for 2021, which is refuge. And I think that God is creating a refuge among believers and a place of refuge. But if you listen to that talk, part of that is, is then going out and bringing light into the world, bringing the vaccination of taking away fear. We have a calling. We cannot retreat into ourselves. Ooh, yeah. Can't. Not now. This is not the time that you talked about putting on the armor. We've got the armor so that we can go into, we can go forward. Yes. Ah, so good. I could go on and on and on. Here's what I want today, if you will, hashtag rise up. Hashtag not shaken. That's what I'm going to be putting in when we finish here today. Daniel, you've been, uh, this has been so awesome. We'll have to do this again sometime. But for today, could you pray for us before we go? Mm, I'd be honored. I have chills all over me <laughs> from the time <laughs> together. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good morning, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this new year. We thank you for where you've brought us and where you're taking us. Lord, as we look, as we reflect, as we marinate daily in your mm -hmm. word, Lord, you, that is our compass. That is our instruction manual is um, our Bible. And I thank you, Lord, for giving us your Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and discernment as leaders. And even when our knees are shaking, even when the earth is shaking, even when the heavens are shaking, as we read, as I read throughout the Old Testament and all throughout the New Testament also, the shaking in the worst of times and the shaking in the best of times, Lord, you remain um, immovable. You are steadfast. You are a consuming fire and you are unshakable and you have called us to be unshakable from Acts 2, from Pentecost, suddenly, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we are filled with your Holy Spirit. And I pray that you will give us supernatural wisdom, supernatural discernment, supernatural um, courage to move forward, move forward in faith, unshakable faith. And we will give you all the praise and the glory. And we can't wait to see you face to face. And for you to say to each of us, I pray those words. Well done, mm. good and faithful servants. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the God you are. We thank you for where you've taken us, where we are now, and where we're going. And we give you all the praise and the glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Danya, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone who joined us today. Have a great day. I'll be back on Tuesday. God bless you.